All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt Davis. I'm going to be your MC today. Let me be the first to officially welcome you guys to the 2020 Gamma Executive Super Fight Scrimmage. We have to thank our sponsors today. First stop, we're Chiropractic. Their practice specializes in treating a variety of conditions from chronic low back and neck pain to rehabilitation following an accident or injury. And we'd also like to thank Flood Solutions as well. Flood Solutions, Inc. is right by your side to take charge of the cleanup and recovery following water damage that can make a mess out of your property. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee today is a Matt Sarah Black Belt referee, Dave Patton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise out of the blue corner, representing Method MMA out of Forest Hill, Maryland. Ladies and gentlemen, big noise right now for Jose Cespedes. So we got Jose walking out now. How you doing, Greg? Maine Miller and Greg Lou here. Greg from Grapple Academy, Maine from the Grappling Rewind, doing some commentary here for the Gamma Executive Super Fights. How's it going? And ladies and gentlemen, out of the red corner, representing Gamma, give it up right now for Corey Hutchings. So Corey's walking out now. So Greg, you actually coached Corey for That's this, right. but actually, who coached him during this event? I am the one coaching him, and funny enough, I used to coach Jose Cespedes, so I know both their styles pretty good. I knew that going into it. That's why I knew it was going to be a good match. Yeah, because you actually played matchmaker for this whole event. Uh, so this is actually a fun match. This event, this match actually kicked off the event. Uh, and this was a really fun one. I was excited for it because I've trained with both guys in the past. So we see a lot of hand fighting here initially. But Jose is primarily a wrestler. It's really what I knew him as. Nice, strong, heavy base. I know Corey has a nice top game as well. So I was really excited to see how this would play out. Yep, pulls guard right away. I think it was interesting to see Corey pull initially. He's doing a really good job controlling that far side arm on our side, trying to maintain and keep Jose. Jose's posture down. Uh, where do you think he's going to go from here? Well, I mean, I've been game planning with him. He likes sweeps and he likes to set up subs, but the first thing he wants to do is just break posture down, just constantly break posture down, wait for the top person to make their move, and then he bases it off of that. Yeah, I think he's doing a really good job. Looks like he almost looks like a little bit of a loop choke there for a second, like threatening something active from the guard. Really yeah. nice yes. sweep over there. I was really That was a really exciting sweep. He yep. basically takes like a flat scissor sweep over. Yep, Jose was able to recover half guard very quickly. Got a nice lockdown there on the lower leg. Looks like Corey's putting a lot of pressure down with that front side cross face, but Jose's doing a good job sort of addressing it and pulling out on the far side, in the close side sleeve. Maybe looking for like a sweep there. Yeah, for a second looks like he wanted to get under the deep half, but... Corey was able to stop that, getting under the arm. Yeah, Corey looks like he's doing a good job of walking that leg up, but Jose is maintaining that deep, that um, that lockdown. But it looks like Corey's sort of starting to outstep it with his knee, but Jose's gotten back to it. Good top pressure from Corey here. Looks like he's still sort of working through the lockdown, sort of forcing Jose to turn over. He's trying to walk his top knee that's stuck in Jose's half guard there out so he's able to pass the guard, doing a good job grabbing that underhook and framing on the face. Yep, Jose's got the underhook. He knows that he needs that underhook to start working his way up, especially if he likes to wrestle. Yeah, so this is actually IBJJF points. There are no advantages, but it is sort of standards point scoring. So as soon as Corey gets past the guard, he's going to get three there. And that's really what he's looking for. So Corey's looking to most likely not sub from this position, sort of establish some dominant positions, score points, and then kind of ride it out from there. Yeah, it looks like he's looking for a sit-through pass, trying to bypass side control, go right to mount. Jose's doing a good job, though, of keeping that there. But Corey, there you go, pops the leg out, initiates a little bit of a scramble, goes to the front headlock position. Nice roll through here. Does a good job rolling through, see if he comes up. Yeah, he feels like he's losing position, so he just wanted to come up control. Doesn't get any passing points, though, because Jose was able to get the turtle. Yep, and there's no advantages here, so there's no add either. Nope. So we're going to reset here, come back to the center of the mat. And this is our only blue belt match, so the blue belts get to kick it off. It's, you know, it's nerve-wracking being the first match, so props to them. Yeah, but the whole event's a lot, a lot of fun. It's a, it's a really cool uh, thing to happen in the gym. Corey's doing a good job here trying to get around, trying to basically take the back, trying to get that. Looks like he's kind of in the middle of getting both hooks in. Jose's doing a good job keeping that front side collar grip, or front side sleeve grip, to prevent Corey from swinging all the way around. Some of the wrestling we saw earlier, but then Corey's doing a good job here. Getting around, getting that far side hook him, turns him over, go, feet are crossed. Not sure control. if he's going to get the points for this one. There he goes. And points are scored. So Corey with a nice lead here. I think he's got six points. Uh, Something like that, Greg. As most folks know, I'm not a huge points guy. 
Yeah, so there's no rush for Corey at this point. He knows he's up on points. He's in a dominant position. But uh, Jose's a grinder. Yeah, Jose's doing a good job fighting that arm across, kind of getting low. And Jose's got an yep. interesting body type, so it's really hard to keep shoulder to chest there. And there it is. He was about to lose position. And uh, so Corey wants to come up to mount. Jose recognized it, grabbed that half guard again. Yep. Again with the lockdown, I think, with the half guard. I can't quite see the foot position here. Corey looks like he's going to try to get a good job and trying to pull Jose's arm behind him. Almost like he's trying to go for like a Japanese-style like grip on the back of the head there. I wonder if Corey will try to sit through the back here as well. He's got that farce, that close side hook in. He may be able to sit behind Jose here and get the back. He's got the nice gift wrap, but again, given Jose's body type, it may be pretty difficult for Corey to get him up off the mat far enough to get that that underside leg through. He just needs to pillow that head. If he can pillow the head up a little, bit, a little higher, start falling, but it looks like he wants to keep this Kimura grip. I don't know if he's threatening a sub or just trying to get his arms up higher to take his back. Corey does have the option here to go for that arm bar if he can get his leg free, but it is pretty risky with the leg still trapped to kind of try to step the leg over to get to go for the arm. Corey doing a good job here, maintaining a nice pressure, really preventing Jose from able to get the good underhook in order to use that half guard effectively to get out. Man, Jose's still hanging in there, holding tight on that leg. He knows if he passes, he's going to get pass points again. He goes right to Turtle. Oh, you know what, Corey, Jose almost scored, scored two points there at the end. Yep. Time ran out, 6 nothing. <laughs> so that does it for our first match. Yeah, you know, the, the, the points don't tell the whole story. If that match went on for another 20 seconds, Jose was going to score another two points and be in a top position. But, yeah, great, great first match. I was very excited. To have two people I know, two people that I'm friends with, to, to represent. Points, Mr. Corey Hutchings, five points. Great first match. So, Greg, what was the thought when you laid out this card for how you actually kind of went through all the matches? Well, first of all, I wanted to put it in order. You know, blue, purple, brown. But the whole thing is, this is everybody in this in this card is 40 years and older. Uh, I wanted to not only just showcase the art over 40, you know, it's, just, it's not just for the young guys, but I also wanted to get fair matches, you know. It's hard for them to get fair matches. IBJJF is pretty much the only place they can get a fair match these days. So the next match we got is uh, a gentleman you've competed against before. That's right. A few times. And ladies and gentlemen, out of the blue corner, please welcome, representing Dimitri Krisos Jiu-Jitsu in Virginia, Joaquin Hacero. So Joaquin actually has two matches on this card, and uh, did he step in for someone there? Yeah, so it's it's uh, it's very hard to put a fight card together. A lot of people get injured and, and back out. And ladies and gentlemen, out of the red corner, please welcome representing standard Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Alexi Izikov. And uh, last minute, he he stepped up, filled in a, a slot against somebody ten years younger than him. So he he stepped up. That's awesome. Alexi, yeah, you've seen him a lot in the community. He competes all the time, and he's always with the always has the camera. And this event was no different. As soon as this match finishes, Alexi's actually going to grab the camera, and you're going to see him uh, taking shots for the event. Yeah, and he's the friendliest guy. Super friendly gentleman. So some nice hand fighting here initially. Uh, I'm not familiar with Alexi's takedown game, and he goes for a guard pull there. Yeah, could have been could have been a could have been a takedown too. It's going to be up to the ref on that one. Looks like he's calling it a guard pull. And again, this is this is laid out more like a scrimmage, it's supposed to be friendly and not not too serious. And hence all the laughter in the crowd. Lexi again doing a good job keeping posture from the guard. Looks like he's got does he have a single butterfly hook yeah, or he's both got butterfly one, hooks? One butterfly hook. Looking to break that posture down. We'll see if he starts setting up a sweep. Potentially into that overhook butterfly guard sweep there, but it's a little difficult with his hips kind of where they are. He's usually gotta pull his hips out and then basically roll over. There you go. We come back to the close guard here. He's getting a deep collar grip. Yep. 
Kyler get going for the two on one on the same side. Potentially he's going to look to sweep to that side, but Joaquin is doing a really good job here of hand fighting and preventing Alexi from grabbing the grip that he wants. Um, it's interesting that Joaquin is electing to take the grip so far above on the collar. Uh, really doesn't look like he's looked like he's interested or worried about kind of the arm bars from there on that cross side collar from the guard. Yep, the guard is open. We're going to see if uh, Joaquin stands up and tries to pass. Yeah, we've seen a lot of shifts in the current meta. A lot of guys elect a standing pass versus kind of passing on the knees. It's really sort of the current meta that is kind of the general practice nowadays. But Alexi's doing a really good job here of holding the guard. He's kind of walked that guard up from like a low hip guard to like in the middle of the rib cage, um, really aiming to pull Joaquin down. Got the nice two-on-one grip now, cupping behind the elbow, and uh, Joaquin's doing a really good job of hand fighting this. Looks like he may be going for a cross collar. It's not quite deep enough. And now Joaquin is starting to fight to open the guard. Yeah, he sort of got that knee in the middle, pushed on the hips a little bit. Lexi switched to collar sleeve. Yeah, it's real extended, though. It's going to be really difficult for him to play it from this position. Lexi's doing a really good job, though, of hooking that leg and preventing the step out. Yep, he's, he, Lexi's picked up the lockdown as well. Trying to get that weight a little bit lower, create a little bit of space. Zakin's pretty low here, and so he is going to have a difficulty kind of freeing his knee uh, with his position so low on the hips. You know, that lockdown is going to be really effective from that angle, given the hips, kind of how low the hips are on Alexi's hips. And so he's going to most likely work to get to a base up and try to, like, lift his leg out of the lockdown. He's going to have a difficulty fighting it through like he's trying to fight it now. Alexi's finally got that sleeve grip he's looking for, though, on that cross side. He looks like he's doing a really good job pulling that in, and he's lost it. He does have an arm drag across, so he is exposing back, but he's not giving up the lockdown quite yet. I mean, you can still get that sweep with the lockdown, but I think it's difficult to kind of switch your hips in enough, especially with how extended Alexi is. He may have some difficulty kind of generating enough momentum and swing to get Jaquin over. jaquin has got that nice underhook now. We're going to see him probably walk his leg up and start to free the knee out of the lockdown. Then he does. There it is. Yeah, he, he's going nowhere until he frees that leg from the lockdown. But now he started to work his, his knee past. Looks like he's trying to go right to mount. Yeah, he's got a nice three-quarter up on top. Like he's got to watch out for that arm lock from that position. He's using his other foot to help pry it. He's switching to like a knee cut, keeping that far side underhook. Yeah, and he boots it all the way through. Gets a nice side control. Yep, gets she, passing points. Gets points. Alexi's a little extended here. He's uh, he's electing kind of not to frame and looking for, it looks like a rollover. He's going to try to roll. Yeah, there it is. Arm. So that is a reversal. Uh, he technically, is that a guard? Would I wouldn't frame that guard? as a guard. The legs got involved, but he never really fully en engrossed the legs. Nice. So he found himself in a good position, but it's not going to it's not going to be worth points according to IBJJF rules. And Joaquin's able to recover top position again. Yep. Now I would say I would say on that one he did end up in a guard for a small amount of time. He may get passing points here. Yeah, I wouldn't think he would get enough. I, I think he did. I think he got he three. He did. Hmm. And that's time. So, Greg, you're looking for the, some, something for the over 40s, showcasing jiu-jitsu at all ages. Yeah, so so I not just showcase it, but I really wanted to get Ladies fair matches. Ladies and gentlemen, points, Joaquin Azero from the blue corner. Because uh, when you go to tournaments, IBJJF, it's after 30, it's every five years, five years. But all the other local tournaments, it's 30 and up. And if you're in your 40s, it's very hard to find someone else in your 40s. You could be 47 years old going against a pro MMA fighter that's 30 years old. So I just wanted to give fair matches. Yeah, you've been a big proponent of executive jiu-jitsu since I've known you. And it's been it's really great to see you put something on like this, kind of to showcase jiu-jitsu again at all ages. It was uh, really exciting to be a part of it. Well, especially as I'm creeping up to that 40-year-old. You're getting close, Greg. I'm almost there.
I can't wait to age in the Masters. Ladies and gentlemen, out of the blue corner, please welcome representing Dimitri Kresel's Jiu-Jitsu in Virginia, Drew Kovalevich. So Drew walking out here. So Greg, you have people from all across kind of the Eastern Seaboard that came came down for this card. What was the thought process in getting a lot of these guys? Yeah, you know what? I just I just put it out there on Facebook, and out whoever responded will take. Representing Noel Smith Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Cameron Butcher. Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get everybody from Maryland. There's just not enough people over 40 that are purple belts, even. So, well, you know, we got New York, all the way down to Virginia. Yeah, pretty big variety of guys. So Cameron Butcher versus Drew Cove. Uh, give, give, give me Drew's last name. Couldn't tell you. Sorry. <laughs> it is on the screen here for you to read. Again, nice hand fighting. Quick guard pull. Drew elects to pull and then immediately sweeps and goes for the arm. But, uh, looks like Cameron recovered. No points. He was able to stop it and find himself in a guard. Kind of the ideal situation that you want to be in from that sweep. Yeah, he recovered very, very quickly. Drew doing a really good job here keeping him postured down. Looks like he's almost trying to get up the side there. Potentially look to take the back. He's got a nice grip, and that belt grip is really, really hard to break, especially from that posture down position. Drew's doing a really good job of keeping the posture. There's a lot of sweeps available to him here once the posture, and he kind of gets a little bit of that back exposure there. Yeah, Cameron's he, now postured up, sitting back, and he's looking to start breaking with a two-on-one grip. Going the knee and the butt pass, getting that leg real far out, trying to push the hips to the mat, open the guard, and there he goes. Transitions right to a lasso, and instantly hits a lasso sweep. Can he finish the sweep? Gets the sweep. Really good job coming up there. Controlling the hips now, nice and low, make sure to establish the guard, make sure to establish the side control in order to get the points. He's got that nice grip on the low pants. That grip I find is very, very difficult to break because you really have nothing you can push against there. Now it looks like he's just trying to put as much pressure as possible. Yeah, I got the good cross face pressure, and he's electing to put his body not as close to the hips and sort of really up on top of the shoulders. Looked for mount, went a little bit too fast, a little telegraphed. And yeah, Cameron does a good job here of kind of locking up that half guard again, and again, elects to go to the lockdown. Yeah, the lockdown seems to be, uh, seems to be the theme today. Yeah, when you're really trying to stop a lot of the positional work, it's, I think it's a good intermediary place to use. Gets a sweep of his own. Nice sweep from Cameron. Comes up. Now he's doing again a nice job with the cross face. He's walking it up. But Drew does have the underhook. He's, he's and he's got that bell grip again. Right side. And Cameron's doing a good job holding, pulling that arm up, working that knee cut. Nice back step. Looked like he was almost swept. Drew gets the sweep. Nice job goes to Turtle, though. So no points, but he's able to get the back, but isn't able to establish it enough or long enough in order to get the points. And Didn't Cameron does a good enough. job blocking the three-quarter there. Just got to push that knee, get the half. He's already got the underhook, but it looks like he may be setting up an arm triangle on Cameron. Yeah, he's working the head and arm. Cameron's doing a good job answering the phone. Again, he has the lockdown. It's going to be really hard to generate enough pressure there in order to get the sub, but it does have to get addressed, and Cameron does a good job of posturing out, does a good job pulling on the body and pushing away the hips in order to free himself from the arm triangle. Yeah, he tried to do a sweep uh, and unfortunately gave up position. It took him right to mount. I'm curious if Drew will throw the grapevines in and uh, and push him out, or it looks like he's working for, I'm not sure if he's going to look for an arm or just really look to establish a heavy position here. It looks like he's sort of allowing the role for Cameron. I'm not sure if he's looking for that uh, rolling arm because these guys have had a tendency to sweep each other with those big overhead push sweeps. Yeah, I think he just wants a secure position. He knows he's up on points. He knows time is low. No point for him to rush at this point. Yeah. Are all these matches five minutes? Yeah, we're going to Regardless every, of belts? Everything is five minutes for this. Yeah, doing a good job. He's got the underhook on both arms, so it's going to be really difficult for Cameron to basically generate enough leverage on his shoulders to buck Drew off. But Drew is having to stay dynamic here. And uh, I'm curious to see if he'll elect for just this high mount or if he's actually going to go foot on the hips mount and really put big big pressure into Cameron's armpits there to start to isolate an arm the 
Yeah, good roll through for the back there. Looks like he's sort of getting out to the side. Looks like he is on an arm here. I couldn't quite tell if that was a triangle or an arm bar. There, but really nice in transition there. Gets it done. Is that our first submission of the night, Greg? I believe that was. So, Greg, what was the thought with the prizes for this event? Looks like you're handing out some axes here. Yeah, I got some hatchets, some, some throwing axes, some Ladies regular axes. From Dimitris Krisos Jiu-Jitsu, out of the blue corner, Drew Kovalevich. Just didn't want to give you a regular trophy or medal. I wanted to give something exciting, something they could show off. Yeah, I saw the hatchets uh, come into the gym uh, like a couple days before the event, and I went, ooh, this looks exciting. This is a, a good prize. I always like when events give out prizes that are not just your standard medal. It always gives uh, makes the event a little more fun to me personally. Yeah, they all appreciated it. I got a, got a few messages after. So next match, we got Mike Papa versus Nino Rodolfi. Greg, you, uh, you run Gamma, and you've also trained at Law MMA before, so have you ever got a chance to train with Nino? Yeah, I know, I know both of them. I've rolled with both of them plenty of times, and uh, it's, it's two different styles here. Nino just likes to throw subs out from everywhere, and uh, Mike Papa is just all technique, so this is just going to be throwing subs, a, a gritty New Yorker against uh, Mike Papa, who's more of just, just loves using technique. Everything is technique. He doesn't use strength. Ladies he is a strong guy, corner, though. Representing Gamma, please welcome Mike Papa. So Mike, come on. Yeah, I know we're with Mike. Mike typically will always use just like real, real, like heavy positional work. He's not a guy that's ever really going to throw something out of nowhere. He's really going to walk towards his side. corner, representing Law MMA in New York. Give it up for Nino Rodolfi. Never got a chance to train with Nino, but from what you're saying, it seems like uh, sub subs. That's really the name of the game for him. Yep, he's got a lot of subs from everywhere. Papa likes to go down a path. It's very slow, and uh, even if the person knows what he's doing, he still can get it done. You got the black on blackies. First cut. First uh, first same color gi match of the day. Yep, we got Nino wearing the red. Papa's in the blue. Nino like pulls said, guard instantly for a submission. Immediately into their arm bar. Let's see if Mike's going to stand up and posture out or just trying to pull through. Yeah, it looks like his elbow is clear. Nino transitions to a high guard. Looking for a triangle choke. Maybe pull the arm across for uh, Oma Plata. Yeah, Papa's standing up a little bit. I'm curious if uh, Nino was going to go for, for like a flower sweep or something on that standing leg, given how high he is on the legs, or if he's just going to look for the sub, look for the triangle. Papa's staying very calm, punches the arm through, and now kind of resetting, match starting from here. Yeah, doing a good job maintaining his posture. Guard is open. Nino starts looking for a loop choke. Now he's looking to take his back. Yeah, that grip actually looks fairly deep into the choke. Nino's gotten a, done a really good job here getting on his side, and he's actually trapped that far side leg to prevent Papa from stepping over and sort of out of the choke. The grip is still in. Nino's still pulling on it. Gets the rollover on Mike. Yeah, he tries to roll through once. Could properly keep rolling. So now we, it's not really a loop anymore. It's more of like like a baseball choke. Yeah, baseball from the back. Knee. It's tight, though. I'm curious to see what's going to happen, if Papa can get out of this or if this is... Uh... Papa's fighting the grips right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Nino has that really, really strong grip on top of the shoulder with his leg, able to put a lot of pressure down there. Ooh, and yeah, he transitions over to the over side. The this is extremely difficult to get out of. And he gets the tap. Really nice dynamic subs from Nino. Like you said, a guy that hunts subs from all positions. I've not seen a, uh, a finish from the back like that in a bit, so it's really cool to see it here. Yeah, I've talked to his coach and his teammates, and that's, the, that's his theme. He, he could throw a submission from anywhere. You can be in bottom side control, and he's, he's throwing a wrist lock on you. <laughs> Man from my heart, Greg. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your winner out of the red corner by submission, Nino Rodolfi.
So next match, we got Kyle Hare versus Scott Reese. Trained with Scott uh, quite a bit over the years here at Baltimore. Not got a chance to train with Kyle before. Uh, any experience with Kyle before? I have not, but uh, these are two really big boys here. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be exciting. I have rolled with Scott many times. Very, very strong guy. Ladies and gentlemen, from the blue corner, representing Agoji, give up right now for Kyle Hare. So Kyle Wong, can I agree? I think this is the uh, the biggest guys on the super fight. I believe that they definitely. And for the Baltimore Scott Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu out of the red corner, Scott Reese. And we are off. I'm interested to see what kind of game Kyle plays because all his fingers are taped up. Typically that is uh, indicates to me a very, very heavy, strong grip game. He looks for that outside tricep grip. Interested to see if he'll throw here or if he's going to look to basically pull into a sweep. Uh, so Scott was just able to off-balance him. Gets two. Right into the half guard. Doing a good job of cross facing. He's still a little high. Kyle's doing a good job keeping pressure on that top side hip. Yeah, in order Kyle's to keep Scott. Got a great frame right now, so he's, he's able to keep space. Scott's putting his face kind of in the chin here. It looks like he's still going to have a, kind of a difficulty flattening Kyle out. Kyle's doing a good job hand fighting here. Is the knee shield in or no? I don't think the knee shield is in, but he's doing a good job not letting Scott get a cross face and an under. He's just going to keep fighting for that inside control. You're really active with the hand fight. Comes up with a single. Really nice turnover. Scott quickly is looking for a Kimura grip. But Kyle does a good job of getting far enough away, then, but Scott's able to get the knee shield back in, kind of, you know, that double threat with the Kimura grip and then able to get the knee shield back in to cover a kind of a more dominant guard. I guess we'll see if Scott starts playing Z guard. Yep, goes right into that Z guard knee shield. Determine what grips everyone had before we went out. Scott electing for the cross side collar, looking to use as a frame and to push away. I'm curious to see what he's going to use to sweep there. Kyle did a good job of flattening out. Got that nice kind of cross face there. Not putting a ton of pressure, but enough to flatten Scott out. Scott looks like he's get, looking to get his hips away and kind of go underneath Kyle. Yep, now he's looking for a lockdown. He doesn't quite have it. He kind of went for a sweep on his own, but he didn't give it 100%. Yeah, so Kyle was able to walk over pass. it. Walk over and get the points. So now Kyle's in a really good spot. He's past the guard. He's very high. As you know, this is not a fun feeling to be on the bottom with someone heavy laying across your face. Almost looks like he was going to... Oh, no. Yeah, it kind of looked like he was going to throw that choke there. But again, I like again. I like Kyle's position here. He's nice and high. He's really off of Scott's hip. Scott's got really tall legs, so he can get a lot of buck to it. And Kyle's doing a really good job of staying just on the shoulders. Again, trying to step over, but he's able to not get caught up in the half guard, realizes it gets back to the side control. I think Kyle's fed his own belt, or maybe Scott's belt, to his left hand. He's going to reach back to block the hip, probably circle towards the head, or back to mount. Yeah, nice big step over there. Yep, gets his points. Scott's doing a good job of keeping that frame in. Yeah, Scott's trying to relieve some pressure off his face right now. Yeah, it looks like a really heavy cross face. Kyle's got a really good grip on that top side shoulder, and he's really able to put a lot of pressure into Scott's face. Scott's face is getting a little red there with, uh, with the pressure of the cross face. Looks like Kyle actually tried to step out there, and Scott was able to get the guard back. All right, so Scott's just going to try to break his posture down, maybe get a reaction out of him, go from there. Now Kyle's going to have both hands in the armpits. Scott's doing a good job keeping the posture up. Kyle's not able to break the guard with uh, with where he's located. 
Going to go double armpit grip, try to probably push off of it, but Scott's doing a good job keeping his hips in the air and really he's able to keep the close guard from this position. Kyle using the grips, pressing up. Scott's doing a good job of keeping the posture down, but I'm not sure if Kyle really has the incentive to really look for a lot of movement here. I think he's up on points. Yeah, he is up. He doesn't have much to do. It's really up to Scott at this point to turn up the heat and try to score. Kyle can ride this one out. We guys got a uh, timekeeper call for 30 seconds. Yep, so Scott's got to go now. It's now. And Kyle knows that, so he's just going to keep the pressure on him. Did a really good job pressuring that far side, that close side shoulder to us here. Going to bury the head down, really try to stifle any sort of sweeping opportunity that, that Scott has. Ten seconds left. Scott's trying to hip out, go under, maybe get something going, and he knows. And they're still laughing. That's what this is all about. This is for fun. It's for fun and for hatchets, Greg. It is for hatchets also. But Scott did start off strong with that with that takedown. But uh, Kyle was able to hold on. Once he once he was up on points, he knew exactly what he had to do to win. And I'm sure he's not an easy man Ladies to sweep. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, your winner by points, Kyle Hare. Nice job by Kyle there. I hope there's a, uh, a catalog or a bunch of images of the winner photos somewhere on Facebook. I think actually Alexi took all of the photos after his matches. So next match we got, Sav we got uh, Savon versus Jim. Uh, I got a chance to train with both these guys over the years a bit. And uh, there's a little bit of weight difference for these guys, I think. Yeah, it's not that not that much off. A lot of these matches, the, the weights were off. Out of the blue corner, representing Creative Jiu-Jitsu. Give it up now for Savon Thamavon. But, you know, we ran it as a scrimmage. Everybody agreed to the matches. Same thing. I've rolled with both of them. I, I've rolled with Jim years ago. He was very, very uh, lapel friendly. He used to wrap my own lapel around my neck three times. So we'll see if he goes for some lapel work Jim today. Conway. I like that good lapel friendly. That is one way to put it. He's lapel friendly. And Savan is very sneaky. He's got a really good guard. He, he could switch from, from like, uh, lapel guards as well. He plays collar sleeve. He plays lasso. He plays a lot of open guards. Yeah, this match is really fun because I know both guys tend to like really favor the lapels, and both are really heavy gi guys. Both really actively looking for the grips on the feet. Savant pulls very quickly, and he's going to be up to something. He doesn't just pull for no reason. He's got a nice grip on that far side arm, really looking to kind of stretch Jim out. Great job. He's going to sit up as you throw a loop choke. Can't quite see. That's a really strong position, and Jim's sort of in this this middle ground that's very difficult to address. He's doing a good job kind of collapsing Savan's legs, but Savan plays this guard and is probably very hip to the, kind of that strategy for getting around it. It looks like Savan wants to play some collar sleeve as well, but Jim's keeping his weight really far back, which is going to make it hard for a sweep. Yeah, I don't play a, a, as much collar sleeve or most lapel guards. That's kind of always where I push to you, Greg, for uh, for kind of the meta of what's going on with the, with the lapel guards. Well, now he's switched to a spider guard and a lasso. So he's playing spider and lasso. Jim gets that knee in the middle. So Jim has to address the spider first. And he does clear the spider. Savon tries to throw a triangle up really quickly. Jim Jim recognizes that. And the thing about Savon is he's he's trying a lot of different different stuff, but he just doesn't want to give up position. He just keeps going back to what feels feels good. Yeah, I mean this is a points game, so if you're on the bottom, you're really looking to sweep. You're not going to get too too developed or into something that potentially may get you passed because then you're going to give up the points. Savon's getting, doing a really good job getting that far side lapel and that far side grip on uh, Jim's hand. He just let it go, but he's had it. But Jim's lifting and elevating Savon's hips there, and looking Jim's to step around. To pass. Jim's got some control of the legs now, which is going to be a problem for Savon. Because he needs his legs free to activate these guards. 
Yeah, Jim's not fully crushing down Savant's top leg with his chest. Savant's able to really flare that outside butterfly hook out, or the lasso hook out well. And it uh, looks like Jim's sort of just trying to collapse them both and pull him under. But Savant's doing a really good job having active hips here and forcing Jim to sort of have to reset over and over to get the passing position that he wants. Again, Savan looks really, really strong with that outside sleeve grip. Uh, he keeps going back to it, and I'm, I'm guessing that we're going to see some sort of elevator sweep or lasso sweep from that grip. That seems to be his favored grip position, is that cross-side collar and that same side sleeve. Now, Jim did a good job sitting on top of that leg, because that basically put him in half guard, and it gets rid of a lot of what Savan is going for right here. So he's going to probably have to switch it up a little bit now. Same pressure, Jim. Two minutes. I might get swept to the table here. Looks like he gets back to a closed guard. It's just decides not to close it. Wants to keep it open and keep it moving. He's got an arm drag. He's looking to take the back, but Jim recognizes that right away and starts circling the opposite direction. Clears the leg. Really nice identification of the position there. Jim did a really good job of kind of walking around the side there and uh, passing the guard as he gone. He gets his points. Now Jim's looking for that same side arm. Looks like he's trying to punch it to the mat. Again, walking up nice and heavy, getting off the hips so that Savan can't bump. He's doing a good job kind of turning away. Potentially we're going to see a gift wrap to back take or maybe even a try at an arm bar. Potentially Jim could go to mount here. Um, Savan's doing a good job turning away, kind of disincentivizing the step over to mount, but it is still there if he wants it. It looks like Jim's got the gift wrap, and he's also working an underhook at the same time, which really just brings Savan's arms over his head. This is a really difficult position to stop the pass from, or stop the, the pass over to mount from, because your shoulders are completely controlled, and so there's only so much you can buck and get away from. Jim's doing a really good job riding that knee on rib. Potentially he's going to put that knee to the mat and sort of windshield wiper his leg over and take maybe mount, could be going to like a three-quarter or like a back mount elects to fall off, and there it is. Yep, he goes right to a high mount because he already had underhooks. Now he's he's under the arms with his knees. Yeah, he's got foot on the hips too. Uh, not quite anymore, but he's nice and low. And looks like he's going to start isolating. Potentially might go for that topside Americana. He may have the head and arm here, step over triangle. There's a lot of options from this high mount. I'm not as familiar with Jim's game from this position to know what he's going to favor. Close match. I think that's one of the most dynamic kind of guard matches we've seen so far. Really good lapel work on both sides and out gripping from, from Jim and Savan really just working for the sweep. Yep, and another theme I'm seeing in this in this uh, super fight is grinding out. They're all grinding it out. They're they're getting a point, they're settling, they're being heavy, they're going to the next part, they're settling, they're being heavy. There's no rush. Nobody's rushing and losing position. It's executive just you, Greg. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by points at the red corner, representing Baltimore Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Jim Conway. So next match, we have Jim Fitzgerald versus Stephen Heffron. Yep, I haven't trained with either of them before, uh, but James does train at our affiliate school that we're under, Baltimore BJJ, and uh, I hear good things about him. He goes really hard, I hear, and um, he stepped in also last minute too because uh, Steven's opponent had to pull out, and, uh, and uh, James just stepped in and said, I'll go against anybody. So there That's is awesome. a weight difference on this one. I always love guys who want to step up and, uh, and take a match whenever they can. Now please welcome out of the blue corner, representing Alliance Maryland, Stephen Heffron. Please welcome James Fitzgerald. And we are off. 
really active grip fighting here. Both guys look like they want a specific grip and will not settle for uh, for any other counter grip. James using that leg to keep breaking the grip. Oh, that almost crashed into the table. Steve using the, the leg to stop the grip from the James. I've had not, haven't had anyone go through the table yet, which is a good thing, Greg. Yeah, now Steve is an interesting stance. Yeah, that really high arm looks like uh, I see in the judo guys will go for the over the back grip to either grab the back patch or almost grab over top for the back grip on the on the belt. It's a difficult grip to get, but th that's the grip he looks like he's getting. Potentially, he can use that to actually open up the front side lapel. But James' lapel actually already is open on that side, so I'm really not certain what he is looking for there. Could be looking to bait a shot, but I doesn't. I don't really think that's what he he'll decide to do. Maybe a timeout. Looks like the referee is looking for a little bit more action from both guys here. Gives them the thumbs up. All in good fun. Ready to go. There we go. Now we're gonna see something. Someone's either pulling or someone's going for it. Steven pulls guard. Double foot on hips guard. James does a good job of passing. But he kept the distance, circled with his toes. In instant back exposure. Yeah, but he probably only get the turtle and he didn't actually fully settle, so Shouldn't still a non-scoring position. But Steve's able to get the sweep and that is scoring. And they come back to the feet. Slams him against the wall. I haven't really turned that a slam, Greg. <laughs> You're not 40 yet. That's a slam. He's going to feel that for days. So they're back on the feet. Seem like a little less hesitant to grip now, more willing to engage and really, uh, in whatever grip, whatever grip is going to is going to be given. Yeah, so James goes for a guard pull, but it wasn't really a guard pull. He had a trick up his sleeve. He was just pulling for a quick sweep. Right to side. Did he? Was there a guard there? Did he pass? I don't believe they gave him credit for a guard. Most likely just a clean takedown. Um, and IBJJF scores the same way, just as a guard takedown, but uh, clean takedown past the legs. No. Trying to determine which side he was on for side control. Which I think is a perfectly reasonable thing to uh, to prefer. I definitely have my preferred side for side sure, control. Sure, we call it strong side and weak side. Everyone's got it, except for except for everyone in the world. So Steve's done a good job here grabbing that pant of James. James gets knee on belly points, or should. He goes right back to side control. Just pick up a few points, go back. Now he's just driving his weight. I think he's the lighter one there, so he just wants to drive hips, make him feel as heavy as he can. Yeah, he's doing a, he's lower on the hips than we've seen most of the guys there, but it looks like Steve's doing a really good job of keeping his elbow in the way, preventing James from kind of walking up high. He's also getting that, that pant grip, and so every time James goes high, he gives up that pant grip, and Steve looks like he's using an elevating with that. Tries for the step over choke, but Steve identifies it and get, gets his arm in the way there to prevent it. Steve keeps electing for that pant grip. Looks like he's going to try a rollover sweep. James tries to get him out, but Steve knows it's coming and uh, goes right to half guard. And now we see if he's, we'll see if he has something from half guard. I'm curious to see if he grabbed the lockdown like we've seen today. There's a lot of guys that use that lockdown and kind of preferred that. Does not appear, though, as lockdown. Looks like he's trying to ride. Gets over to the mount off that ride. Comes up, looks like he's trying to go for the arm, set up that front side cross face to step over. He's going for an arm bar, and Steve shoves the foot right in between. Does a good job, shoves the foot in, and also he has the grip on the pant, which is really going to make that difficult to bunk that out and able to pull it through. It is with the grip and the half guard, and I'm not sure if James is going to be able to finish this arm bar. Maybe go for a toe hold for a second there with that grip. 
it's going to be very, very difficult to get that get that arm through from this position. Potentially, James is going to start to come up and try to refeed the leg through to establish maybe from the back, maybe he gets the arm. Good defense. Just runs out of time to, uh, to mount an offense. Yeah, really good identification of the sub there from James. From Steve. To grab and then place and then basically get everything, get his all defenses in line. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner out of the red corner, James Fitzgerald. So this is his second match. Yep. I actually had the pleasure of rolling with Eric uh, a couple weeks ago at a local open mat. Very, very strong guy. Um, I knew him. I trained with him primarily. I saw him as a leg locker, but uh, had a lot of different answers from a lot of different positions. So Joaquin taking another Ladies one. In the blue corner, representing Dimitri Christos, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Virginia, please welcome Joaquin Azero. I do always love when guys will step up for two super fights in a single day. Uh, I really like, I really always like the culture of jiu-jitsu, the guys who want to take matches and step up. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty sure he came from Virginia, so he was going to take the ride. for Eric Shapiro. So you might as, well, might as well get as many matches as you can if it's offered. And he took it. Already one up for the day, too. Goes for a shot instantly. A double leg gets it. Should score for that. Yep. Points on the board early. Now Eric starts cutting angles right away. So he's up to something. Looks like he wants an omoplata. Yep, doing a really good job of controlling the position. Joaquin's able to pull that out. Switch into a collar sleeve, but loses the sleeve. Joaquin is turning up the heat. He, he wants this pass. He's he's going to go really hard until he gets it. Doing a really good job driving the hips forward there. Good recognition by Eric, though. He knew that he was about to get passed, went to turtle, and prevents the points. Yeah, he's got to fight the back position, though. Yeah, Joaquin's got a good grip with that left arm under his back, so as much as Eric tries to scoot out, as long as he's got that grip, he's not going to fully escape. He's going to cut some angles, he's going to clear some space, but it's very hard to get out with that, that grip. Yeah, the under the, the under the armpit grip from the back is, I think it's one of the more difficult grips to address. It's sort of any sort of that back grip that you can't address with your hands. Uh, you sort of have to disincentivize the grip enough to have someone let go of it. And especially when you have back exposure like that, there are very few things you can do to actually disincentivize it enough to actually have someone let go of that grip. It's basically like functioning like an underhook. He did scramble out of it and take a back, take the back on his own. That was a really cool transition there. Still no points yet. He hasn't gotten his hooks in, but he's in a good position. Yeah, he's close. That top side hook isn't quite over. Shaquille's doing a good job of kind of rolling Eric over the top of his shoulders in order to kind of keep him from squaring and being able to push that hook. And he's also actively fighting the hook with his hand. That's right. Yeah, he knows that once Eric gets that hook in, he's he's going to be down. So he's just going to keep doing everything he can to avoid that. Yeah, and Eric's high enough that he the threat of the choke isn't isn't quite as present, but the arm threat is there. And so he's got to be careful not to posture up too much because Eric can slide down for the arm. Eric is losing his position. Joaquin's done a good job here pulling that outside shoulder and basically pulling Eric off his back. Call it the wrestler escape. To pop his head up, and Eric quickly goes for an arm bar, easily defended by Joaquin, who's now looking for that same pass. He's just grinding. I think we may have a triangle attempt here. Uh, no, both up. Yep, triangle attempt. But he's got a lot of heavier pressure. Yeah, same passing sequence. You know, he really drives his hips well there. And he's able to lift Eric's hips off the mat enough to kind of put him on his shoulders and roll him over, make it really, really difficult to maintain that position. But once again, Eric knows that if he settles inside, he's going to be down. So he goes right to a turtle. He's kind of that intermediate where he's able to put his back on the floor and turtle, back on the floor, turtle. It's just going to avoid Joaquin scoring. That's his goal right now. 
It's been a real back and forth match. This is a pleasure. Now looks like Joaquin is taking the back. We'll see if he gets points. He loses position. Eric finds himself on top. He's able to take the back. Now he's, he's a little too high. He's over the arm, so there's gonna be no there's gonna be no hooks. That's right. He's he's he looking for could possibly fall off. a reverse triangle. Could fall off for the arm as well. Given the positioning on his legs, the arm is there. It is going to be a little bit difficult given how kind of postured over and fallen over he is, but he could get it out through belly down. Yeah, so Eric was holding the Kimura grip for a little bit, which was good. It helped keep control, and he's now given up that grip. Joaquin in a nice tripod position, very, very hard. It's going to be very difficult for Eric to get his hips up enough in order to get the arm out. Now he has escaped before Eric got hooked, so there's no points for that back control. There's less than a minute. And uh, as much action there was, there wasn't too much scoring. It's very low score, so anybody could still win this. These are always really interesting matches to be matches where there's huge positional changes. Ooh, nice, nice armbar attempt here. Eric Lupin under may go flower sweep on the armbar. It looks like he lost it. Jaquin is doing really good on keeping nice heavy pressure here, preventing the sweep. Going to start extending the legs out, maybe pass long range. Now it looks like uh, he's setting up that omoplata again. But he's short on time, and he's down on points. Less than 10 seconds to go. Eric's doing a really good job with that same pass, getting the hips up again. Forcing the turtle. Yeah, Joaquin has a good pass there, but Eric knows that uh, if, if he lets him settle, he loses, so he does a good job turtling. Very, very close match. 2 nothing. There's only two points. Lots of action for two points. This, both guys understand the rules really, really well. Going to the turtle, giving up potentially a bad position in favor of basically not getting the points scored and able to fight out and fight back up to a dominant position again. Really nice dynamic match. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner from the blue corner, by points, Joaquin Azero. Really great example of the executives can, you know, really show up and put on a show. Yep, Joaquin wins two hatchets on the day. Chop down a tree. I mean, do you really need two hatchets for that, Greg? I think one of them's a throwing axe, really. <coughs> it's an ornamental axe, Greg. Nope, nope. Some of them are from Home Depot. They're all engraved, though. They are. I engraved some of them myself. So second to last match for the card. Yep, we're on to the brown belts. I've trained with Neil for many years at this point. Now I never got a chance to train with Ty. Greg, any now, experience with either of these? Representing Dimitri Krisos Jiu Jitsu in Virginia. Out of the blue corner, Philip Ty. No, I've never I've never rolled with Philip Ty. He looks like he's in great shape. It looks um Looks like he's been he's got a lot of patches on the gi. Representing so. Baltimore Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Neil Williams. So it looks like he's probably a competitor, and I have rolled with Neil. I've rolled with Neil a hundred times. Very, very technical. He's got a great deep half guard game. Yeah, that's primarily how we know Neil. So it's mostly a deep half player, you know, looking to go under you and looking to sweep. And I always like the contrast of the geese with the black and white black and the white gi. Makes it always very easy to tell who is who. So Philip decides to take a few steps back, pulls guard very, very fast. Immediate pull. Neil recognizes it. He's not going to let him close that guard. And he instantly creates some distance. Philip's on the attack. He's got a collar sleeve. He's trying to do something with that right leg, but Neil's doing a great job. Ref resets the, uh, the hockey guard position. Got a nice cross collar on that. Almost gets the sweep. Neil recognizes it, comes back up, prevents the sweep. So Neil's doing a good job sitting low. You know, as far back as he sits, it makes this collar sleeve hard to do uh, to, to get the angle that he needs for sweeps. And he just kind of bullies into him and gets gets his sweep. Yeah, that change of direction a lot of times will, will work. You know, you're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling, all of a sudden you come up and somebody's not ready for it. You can get a sweep and get the points with it. Still looking to pass. Neil is then again in his in his game in that half guard position, but he's unable to kind of get the underhook position he wants. Yes, because Neil's left arm is being attacked right now. 
So it's going to be very, very challenging for him to get to deep half and get the grip that he needs to feed to that left hand to feel safe. That's one of the kind of common metas we see for guys that play deep half is the, if you start attacking that top side Kimura grip, it makes it very, very difficult to establish the gripping sequences that you need to kind of play that preferred guard. Right, Neil's about halfway where he needs to be, but he really needs to protect that arm. And he's doing a good job there. He's really grabbing his outside pant grip. That'll prevent it a lot of time, but he's, it's very difficult to kind of main, to keep going up the positional chain just with that preventative grip on the pants. Right, Neil had to basically give up position because to sweep he wanted to go to his left, but that, that exposes his arm. And Ty's going hard on that arm. You know, Neil's recognizing it, turning into it right away. He's got to square his hips up a little more. Ty goes for that mirror lock for a second, extends it out. Switches to a belly down arm bar and gets the tap. Really good transitions there. Nice heavy pressure on the top of the shoulders and able to get Neil over. Gets the belly down arm lock. I looked really strong in those guard positions. Yeah, Philip had a very, very active guard. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner out of the blue corner, Philip Ty. So that puts us into our final match. So top of the card, Greg, main event, John versus JB. Yep, I don't know either of them. I'm pretty sure they have competed against each other before. So this could be a rematch. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome out of the blue corner, representing the Foundry in Gaithersburg, Maryland, John Meehan. So you think they've competed before? I believe, I believe one of them told me they have competed before. This was a hard match to put together. Once you start getting into brown belts and you're talking over 40. Representing Mongol Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Please welcome J.B. Burnley. There's just not too many that want to step up and take a super fight. That's where we are right now. So uh, I had different matches for both of them. Both of them lost their opponents, and they agreed to go against each other. It's always awesome. I always appreciate Again, like I said earlier, I always appreciate when guys are willing to step up and take matches against, uh, against opponents, especially opponents they've faced before. You know, taking a rematch on a super fight is always a really, really interesting prospect. Like he quickly went for some sort of shot, but changed his mind. John does a really good job of stuffing that takedown, but gets immediately into JB's uh, triangle attempt here. Yep, he's got to keep that head up. JB's almost look, he's looking for like almost an invisible triangle. He's got that arm in. Potentially, he's going for the arm bar as well. He's setting up either. He's got a nice double threat here. May look for the double ankle sweep if John decides to stand up again. Now JB is using the collar to pull him down. Right now he can't reach behind his head, so he's using whatever he can to keep breaking that posture down as best as he can. But he's really committed to the position. He's in a very strong position. He has a lot of time to work. I'm interested if he's just going to go for the sub here. Potentially he's going to use this to sweep. Starting to grab that same side sleeve. John's done a really good job posturing up, but it's very difficult in order to get the angle enough to get out. Now he does have the back of the head, which is going to break the posture down a lot easier. And we are definitely going triangle now. <coughs> John's doing a good job going to the re correct side there, trying to break it open. But JB looks very comfortable in this position, very strong. He's pulled John all the way in. I'm interested to see if he's going to try to switch his legs here, if he's just going to try to finish TP style. Yep, and we no, try to get a... He does have the angle he needs. Lock, we're grabbing the head, pulling down. It's going to be very difficult for John to get out of this. And there's the tap. Gets the tap. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner from the red corner by submission, J.B. Burnley. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is our final match for today. So thank you for attending the 2020 Gamma Executive Super Fight scrimmage. Big round of applause for our ref as well.
Special thanks to our sponsors, Stutler Chiropractic, and also Flood Solutions as well. It's now going to be an open mat for the next hour, so any of our competitors or coaches, feel free to take part in the open mat.